the square root of 2 is equal to 2 to the power of a half. Well, let's see if this is true. If it's true, when I square both sides, I should get exactly the same answer. Well, on the left-hand side, we have the square root of 2, and I'm squaring it. And squaring means multiply by itself. So that's the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. Now let's look at the right-hand side. 2 to the power of a half, all to the power of 2. Well, as we saw in a previous video, when you raise one power to another power, you multiply the indices. So a half multiplied by 2 is 1. So I get 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. So therefore, I can say the square root of 2 is equal to 2 to the power of a half. I can also say the cubed root of 27 is equal to 27 to the power of a third. Let's do exactly the same thing. Well, if I take the left hand side and this time I cube it, and I take the right hand side and I cube it, we should get the same answer. By the way, the cubed root of 27 is 3 because what multiplied by itself 3 times gives me 27, 3. So the cubed root of 27 cubed means multiplying the cubed root of 27 by itself three times gives me the cubed root, and I had to use my calculator, of 19,683, which is equal to 27. Now take on the right hand side and cubing it. One power raised to another power, multiply the indices. So a third times three is one. So it's 27 to the power of 1, which is 27. So the two things are equal, therefore the cubed root of 27 is equal to 27 to the power of a third. Let's look at these two results. On the right hand side, I've got the cubed root of 8 is equal to 8 to the power of a third. And I can see where that 3 comes out of. Let's look at the results. So, so I've got the square root of 4 is equal to 4 to the power of a half. And if the cubed root of 8 is equal to 8 to the power of a third. Well, I can see where that 3 comes out of. With the third, it's here under the root sign. But if I look at this 2, I don't see anything over here. Well, in actual fact, if you say the square root of 4, it gives you a clue. The square root of 4 is equal to the square root of 4 and this little 2 is our default value if there is no number under the root. So this means square root or I've got it blank and if it's any other root I state what that number is. So that gives me a rule. If I've got the qth root of a it's equal to a to the power of 1 over q. Now let's look at that a little further. So just summarizing that again. So the square root of x is x to the power of a half. Remember, there's that 2 underneath the square root. The cubed root of x is equal to x to the power of a third. And the fifth root of x is equal to x to the power of one fifth. Now what happens with a sum like this? 25 to the power of 3 over 2. And I'm told to evaluate this, that's find the value of it, without a calculator. Well, I use the knowledge that one power raised to another power multiply the indices. So 25 to the power of 3 over 2 means 3 halves. So I write it as 25 to the power of a half all to the power of 3. And that allows me to solve this problem. I know that to the power of a half is the same as the square root. And I know what the square root of 25 is. It's 5. So now my answer is 5 to the power of 3 or 125. I want you to find the value of 16 to the power of 3 quarters and see if you can do it without using your calculator. Now I'm going to do it in slow steps. So pause the video for a minute. Now check to see if you got the first step correct. So the 3 quarters I write as to the power of a quarter and then all of that is raised to the power of 3. To the power of a quarter means the fourth root of 16. Now what does that mean? It means what multiplied by itself four times gives me 16. So now we have 2 to the power of 3 and that's 8. I want you to evaluate this one, pause the video and see if you can work it out until the end.
did you work it out? And just a little note, when you see 3 to the power of 4, instead of saying 3 3s are 9, 3 9s are 27, 3 27s are 81, we can break that down to be 3 squared, all squared, again using my rules of indices. So the general rule is a to the power of p over q is equal to the a to the power of 1 over q, all raised to the power of p. And that's equal to the qth root of a, all to the power of p.